The Atlanta Hawks are the scariest team. One of, one of, because I think the Denver Nuggets are respectively scary in the Western Conference. Well, <clears throat> these Atlanta Hawks. And shout out Travis. Shout out GM Travis Schlenk for putting the balls on. Okay. It felt like for the longest time, Travis, you, you made moves. Maybe, maybe this is, you know, Landry Fields. Shout out Landry Fields working his way up. And maybe this is some Landry Fields magic we're seeing. But, ma'am, let's talk about these Hawks. I think they've done a good job. They brought in some guy, young guys, you know, to try to compete for a roster spot. But I think the Hawks, it's defense, defense, defense. And now with Hunter Murray and Collins starting between the three, the two, and the four positions. And even Quinn Capella being the vortex, you know, he's not a bad defensive player. I'm going to be honest, this Hawks team can do it. And the Hawks defensive rating last year, 114.9. Not good. Not good. Okay. And if we look at their defensive rating in 2020 to 2021, they were 113.3. And they won significantly more games, okay, that year. Yes, they, they played less. Like, they, and the crazy part is, is their offense was basically the same. It was the defense. And that defensive hit, okay, is what, in my opinion, ranks, you know, if we go over here, the best defensive stats in, by teams, guess who was basically the worst team in the NBA last year? The Atlanta Hawks were ahead of only the Kings, the Pacers, Rockets, and Trailblazers on defense. Okay. And if we go back to the year before when they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals, the Atlanta Hawks were actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They were the 21st. So they fell from 21st to 26 in defensive rating. For me, you look at the Spurs, the Spurs were always in the middle of the pack. Okay. With DeJounte Murray. I think that's a big thing you have to look at. I mean, and the other thing I would also like to say that Greg Popovich coaches defense. But I do believe that, hey, DeJounte, because they're gonna have they're gonna high trade Trey Young on the you know, obviously the worst player on the opposing team. Okay. So like offensive player. And with that being said, I think it's in their best interest to utilize DeJounte Murray and DeAndre Hunter as like these kind of like collapsing pressuring. So I want them to trap and, you know, basically those two guys, Murray and Hunter, I want them on the perimeter, basically suffocating the defense on the perimeter to kind of create this like vortex in a v-shape so if they're two on the perimeter and then you stick tray in the corner guarding the worst person use hunter and murray kind of as this vortex even you could use collins as well those three guys as a vortex the foursome similar to how the jazz would do into rudy gobert but into clint capella that way you force guys either to take a very contested three-point shot or you force them to go into the middle where they have to see clint capella because that's way they'll leave clint capella on an island sort of how rudy gobert would left and you know this is going to work so much better than the jazz because the jazz didn't have perimeter defenders like the hawks do so imagine you clint capella is like a poor man's rudy gobert and his job is to kind of just stay in the paint and if anybody comes into the paint that's his job to f mess those guys days up okay you know use verticality get in their face contested the shot inside the paint and get the rebound okay because DeJounte Murray Collins and Hunter their jobs on the perimeter are going to make sure guys can't get an easy look switch between the three of them and force if they're going to drive force the ball handler to head towards Clint Capella that way they can sag off once Clint steps up and they can rotate onto another guy because when Clint steps up, somebody's going to try to cut behind Clint. So that's when you want John Collins, if he's following, if he's, you know, trailing, 
to switch onto the guy that's going to be slashing behind Capella to stop the backdoor cut. And that way you have Clint Capella, Suffcane. This is this is something that obviously could work really well in the regular season, but they need to refine it so they don't get exposed like the Jazz did using this sort of philosophy of, you know, rotating defensively, forcing the ball handler to go in and get suffocated by Clint Capella while on the outside. And this will work a lot better than the Jazz with the Hawks because the Hawks have the perimeter players to do so, especially off the bench with Aaron Holiday, Justin Holiday, Mel Harkless will be able to, you know, keep the defensive style right here together, you know, for a while. And for me, I, I honestly think this is something that people are overlooking. Okay. I really, I really do think this is a good team. I don't know. And I also do believe Trey Young's an MVP candidate this year because he's been playing a lot more off ball and, Trey Young was training with Steph Curry. Trey Young was training with Steph Curry. Is there anything else I need to say? Is there anything else I need to say? As a matter of fact, I do not think there's anything else I need to say. But that's where I want to hear you guys talk. And then there's also Onyeko Okongo, who Onyeko Okongo, shout out Aaron Barn, one of my subscribers. He sent me a, a great, great little bit. That Oneka Okongu had a better defensive rating than guess who? Draymond Green at points this past season. And if he can keep the fouling down, I really do believe that Oneka Okongu could be, you know, could be the guy that they end up realizing that, oh, Clint Capel is awesome, but Oneka Okongu works his defensive scheme way better. And obviously, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you know, a matter of fit, okay? You can't really control that. That's just. How life is, you know, some people fit into a square peg better than others, okay? Um, for me, I just look at this and I just, I find it rather interesting. I do, I do. And that's where I think this is a team that definitely, definitely is going to, you know, surprise people. Maybe I'm wrong. Also... Dragonbender is now in Spain. Was Dragonbender that big of a bust? Like, goddamn. Either way, this, that's a different video for a different day. Now, I hope you guys do have a great day. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of this team? I got, yeah, no, I, 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 I want to hear your thoughts. What is this? What would you guys do, you know? I just think. It's rather interesting, you know, seeing where where we're at at this point. And um, yeah, okay. Take care. I gotta go.